Now, the first thing I'll ask you to do on a test, if this was on a test, is I'd tell you to find the relative frequency. Uh, last class, the relative frequency is the head count over the total. So the first thing you have to do is find the total. So what are you going to do? You're going to add up the whole right side. So go ahead and find N. That's called N. When you find the total, that's N as in November. So we're going to add this up. Summation of x is equal to n, which is equal to whatever that adds up to be. Go ahead and add it up. Yes, come on in whenever that's fine. How was lunch? Was it good? Well, you should. No, I'm just kidding. Let me guess. Miss Brown. God, I am so good. I'm, I must be telepathic. Or law of deduction, either one. I had a friend of mine start telling me that, she, that they were, what is it, an empath? And that they could put yourself in a state of mind and fly. That's all I'm going to say. I think she done lost her damn mind. I could fly. Okay. Called astro projection. I'm all for supporting friends and family. But I told that person, you better watch who you tell stuff like that, but they're going to think you're blanking crazy. <coughs> all right, so what is the total? Okay, come on. Don't take that long to add it up. Somebody calculate the drill team. What is it? 3957. Is that what it, is that what you got? 3957? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's take the first one, the middle one. I'm not going to do every one of them. Let's take the first one, the middle one, and the last one. So I'm going to put relative frequency. And what's 3 divided by 3957? Just give me three digits. I'm gonna be, it's going to be a small decimal. What? 7.58. Yeah, but you got to move the decimal. How many places? Okay, so far I've heard a bunch of mumbling. Articulate and volume. Okay, let's try it again. Point what? Zero, 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 seven, five, eight. Is that what everybody got? So 7.5 times 10 to the negative fourth power, is that what you got? Mm -hmm. Make sure it's fourth or third. Which one is it? Because I got four places here. It's four. Okay. All right. So let's take this one. 1044 divided by 39.57. And give me whatever, four digits or whatever. What is it? 0.2638. Point two six three eight. Thank you. And then the last one, one divided by thirty nine fifty seven. Just tell me what the calculator says, and I'll do it myself. What is it? Point zero zero two five two. Point zero zero two five two. Is that what everybody got? Yes. Okay. So that's your relative frequency for those three. Now, of course, if you had this on a test, you could do every single one of them. Um, so make sure you know how to do that. Okay. As I told you the other day, I'm going to go down and give you all the stuff that I can ask you of this type of frequency distribution with, with the classes on the left. Um, I skipped it last week, and now I'm going to go over it, of course. 
we went over the relative frequency and that's that so let's go over the stuff that I'm going to ask you about the classes all right one thing I'm going to ask you and it's the most important is the class width okay now before I start on the class width the left hand side of the class is called your lower limit lower limit the right hand side is called the what upper limit okay now hold on there's your upper limit and there's your lower limit the lower limit is on the left hand side the upper limit is on the right hand side and what I tell students I tell students the easiest way to find the class width is pick a side and take the upper value and minus I meant the second value and minus the first value so if you use the lower limit side it would be 15 minus 10 if you use the upper limit side it would be 19 minus 14 either way you're going to get a class width of what five I don't care which one you use 20 minus 15 is 5 24 minus 19 is 5 25 minus 20 is 5 29 minus 24 is 5 30 minus 25 is 5 34 minus 24 and so on so I guess I'm gonna pick a side and I'm gonna say uh, upper limit second value minus upper limit first value so in that case that would be 19 minus 14 which is 5 or you could use the lower limit second value minus the lower limit first value which would be 15 minus 10 which is 5 either way it doesn't matter you're going to get the same answer okay and that's how you find the class width now if you want to go down to the bottom and say 50 minus 45 you can do that but don't say 50 minus 40 because that's not consecutive Hence, I mean if you did that there would be no class width because you go 50 minus 40 okay that's 10 well somebody else would go 50 minus 30 that's 20 so you can't do that you have to do the consecutives so 54 minus 49 is 5 49 minus 44 is 5 40 minus 35 is 5 it has to be consecutive Okay, so the class width for this frequency distribution is 5. Okay, so you know three things now. You know the lower limit, that's on the left-hand side. You know the upper limit, which is on the right-hand side. And then you, if you subtract two consecutives, either the left-hand side or the right-hand side, you're going to get the class width. Okay, the only other thing you need to know is what I call the midpoint okay and that's equal to the lower class limit plus the upper class limit divided by 2 so I'm just going to pick the first one 10 plus 14 divided by 2 is equal to 24 divided by 2 and that's equal to what 12 so the midpoint between 10 and 14 is 12 oh we got to calculate every one of those no now all you do is you add the class width to the first midpoint what's the what's 5 plus 12 17 what's 17 plus 5 20 what? 22. What's 22 plus 5? 27. 27. What's 27 plus 5? 32. And you keep going. 35. What's what's after? I'm sorry. Dork. Um, 32 plus 5 is 39. I'm sorry. It's 37. Oh. 37. Oh, great. I can't erase when I'm using okay you, you get the point that's why the class width is so important the first thing you should get when you have a frequency distribution and you have to find all these numbers the 
first thing you find is glass whip. Unless you just want to, you know, whips and chains, then you calculate all of it. I mean, you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's ten calculation versus one calculation. So you prefer doing all those calculations, knock yourself out. So four things. Lower class limit is the left hand side. Upper class limit is the right hand side. The first calculation is the class width. The second calculation is the midpoint. And that's the four things that you would be asked for on that frequency distribution. They may ask you for a class boundary. If they ask you for the class boundary, and that's a big if because some books don't ask for it, some books do. The class boundary, and what I like to tell people, I'll just say class boundary. If your classes are made up of whole numbers, you're going to go to the 10th spot. If your, if your classes are in the 10th, you're going to go to the what? To the 100th. If your class width, if your if your class uh, if your classes is to the hundredth, then you're going to take it to the thousandth as far as the boundary. You very rarely have to do the last one, and it just keeps going. If if your class if your classes are to the thousandth decimal point, you go to the ten thousandth with the class boundary. So what the heck does that mean, Hubert? Well, these are all whole numbers, right? So this one, I'm going to do 9.5. 9.5 is your class boundary to 10. What is the class boundary after 14? 14.5. 14.5 goes here, and then this is 19.5. 19.5 is here, and this is 24.5. And this is 24.5. Or we could just add the class width to every one of them. What's 19.5 plus 5? What's 24.5 plus 5? What's 29.5 plus 5? Well, let's go to the right-hand side. What's 24.5 plus 5? What's 29.5 plus 5? Y'all get it? Now, what did I do? Well, my, my class boundary was in whole numbers, so I dropped it to the tenth. Now, why didn't I do 0. 0.6? Well, because I'm not weird, that's why. Okay? What if I what if it was to the tenth and I would go instead of five, I would go 0. 0.95. You could use 0. 0.55, but that would be weird. Okay? Because 0. 0.95 is the closest thing to the actual number that you're trying to get to. You see what I'm saying? Um, What's the closest number you can get to? You could say 14.9, but like I say, that would be weird. That would be like if I asked you to pick a fraction and you pick, well, 3 over 144. That would be weird. If I asked you to pick a fraction and you pick one half, that would be normal. See what I'm saying? All right. So if I give you a whole number as a frequency or a class and I say, what is the class boundary to 35? You would say 34.5. You could mathematically say 34.6. You could say 34.7. You could say 34. You could, but most of the time it's going to be 34.5. If it's a tenth, you're going to go to the 9.5. And that's pretty much all you've got to do because you'll never, you'll never run into that. Okay, if you do, it's an accident on my part because I'm not going to test you on it. So if this was... If this was 40, oh well, I'd have to, I'd have to, if it was 9.5, then this would be 8.95 over here or something like that. It would, I'd have to pull up one and we'll probably go over one on the test if this book even asked for the class boundary. The last book we had, which was Triola, it asked for the class boundary. So I don't know if this one asked for. Has anybody looked at the homework yet? Y'all have done anything. 
Hope y'all read at least. Okay, does anybody know it easily? Does any of the homework questions ask for a class boundary? No. It doesn't? Okay. All right, and so if you see it, then there it is. If you don't see it, then don't worry about it. I have a question. Yes. Can I start working ahead on the homework? You can, but wait until I cover before you send questions. Yes. Because I don't want to go over 3.2 questions when everybody should be on 3.1. I didn't, so, didn't want to hurt you. No, 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 that don't bother me. I don't <laughs> care. Just don't be bouncing around saying, what's this, what's this, what's this? Just, I, I, no, don't do that. That's weird. I won't. Okay. Some people do that. They're weird. All right. So, any questions here? This is pretty much I'll ask for, I'll ask for one of those four things. All right. So, let's go to something else now. Let's say that I ask you to do a dot plot, or not a stem belief plot. I think it's called a stem belief plot. <clears throat> dot plot's the same thing, okay? One's numbers, the other one's dots. Uh, stem leaf I'm going to go over because that's pretty standard on a standardized test. Um, and let's say that we've got some numbers over here, and I'm just going to make up some. 10, 11, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14, 14, 15, 18, 20, 22, 25, 30, 36, 40, 42, 48, 50, and 51. Okay? So let's say these are, I don't know what they are, they're something. Okay? And that's that's your data set. Okay? Your lowest number is what? That's why it's so important to put things in order. Your lowest number is what? 10. Your highest number is 51. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to your stem leaf. This thing irritates me. Oh, that hurt my ankle. Mm. All right, so don't you hate it when you hit your knee or your ankle or your elbow? Mm -hmm. Ow, it hurts. All right, so I hit my knee the other day. I was hooking up um, um, the hay bind. I was hooking up the hay bind, and I hit my knee right on the edge of a steel plate that had a corner like about the width of your finger like that. Oh, my Lord, I just laid down. Oh, it hurt. <laughs> It hurt for about three minutes. I just laid down, you know, and heel and everything. I just, no, I'm just kidding. All right, one, two, three, four, five. All right, what does that represent? Well, this represents tens, twenties, thirties, forties, fifties. Why did I not go to sixty? Because you ain't got none. All right, I don't care where you're from. Ain't got none is worse than you don't have any. All right, ain't got none is when you broke broke. I would say something else, but I'm not going. I'll just say broke, broke. All right? When you don't have any money, that means you're just broke. But when you ain't got none, that means you're real. You know what I'm saying, broke, blank. All right? So 10 is your lowest value, so that's why I started with the 1. 50 is your highest value, so I stopped with the 5. Now, what I have as far as 10s? So well, I've got a 0. How many 1s do I have? 2, 1, 1. I have a 2, I have a 3, a 4, a 4, a 4, 5, and an 8. Everybody with me? So I got a 10, 11, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14, 14, 15, and 18. I'm scared to move this thing because I can move it. But the reason I don't move it is because I don't want to cause a total meltdown of the technology, which that would probably do. All right, so 20. We got a zero, a two, and a what? A five. Boom, you're done. So that means 20, 22, 25, and so on. So 30 would be zero and what? Just. And 40 would be 0, 2, and 8. And then 50 
would be zero and one. Now, what you're supposed to do with a scatter plot, I mean not a scatter plot, a stem leaf plot or a dot plot, whatever they call these two things, is you're supposed to take your handy dandy green marker and you're supposed to look at it sideways and look at it like sideways like this and say, well, that's skewed right because all your values are on what side? This. Or it's going to look like a normal distribution or it's going to look like skewed left. So this one is skewed right because all your values, let's say this is ages of people that's in a building. I don't know. Okay? It looks like to me there's a bunch of kids in the building. So it must be a daycare or something in there or a bunch of, or a bunch of or a class in the building or something, a school or something. Because you got a 10 year old, 11 year old, and it looks like all the kids are on the left hand side. So that means that the whatever room or whatever the building is is predominantly students. Okay? So that's how you do a stem leaf plot. The uh, dot plot is the same, except instead of having 0, 2, you're going to have the number of, how many numbers do you have? In other words, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Instead of having 10 digits here, you're going to have 10 dots. Now, why is that not good? Because you don't know what those numbers are. If you're looking at the dot stem leaf plot, you know you've got a 10, an 11, an 11, a 12. If you have a dot plot, that really doesn't help you as much as a stem leaf plot because you don't know the values. You just know that there's there's eight teens and then there's three twenties and then there's two thirties and then there's three forties and two fifties if you had a dot plot. Capiche? Not only you said it was skewed left, right? Yeah, uh, skewed right because all your values are on the left. It's always the opposite. You need to write that down. I think we covered that. I think we did. Uniform, normal, skewed left, and skewed right. I think this one's skewed right because all the values are on the left. Okay, who came in? Mr. Flowery came in. Okay, so everybody's here except for the one I think they probably dropped because they had showed up. So. Oh, Bolding. Bolding never coming in. I'll put a circle there if they come in. Okay. So now we've covered out of chapter two the things that I told you I was going to cover today. I've covered uh, one, the parts of a uh, frequency distribution that are important, and the stem leaf plot. And I just explained to you that the dot plot, instead of having digits, it's going to have dots. Okay. All right, now let's get to the section of math, or, excuse me, the chapter that you're actually going to get 80% of your tests from as far as unit 20. And that would be chapter 3. Okay, now I don't cover the book in chapter 3, I just talk about statistics in chapter 3. So, with that being said, Let's try it. Statistics is the gathering, the computation, the uh, analysis, and the interpretation of data. Now, what do you have to do when you have data? There's two types of data in statistics. There's what I call the data-driven set. And then there's the frequency distribution. Okay, a data-driven set, put in parentheses, test scores. Everybody in here can do your test average since you were in the what, third or fourth grade? You figure up your, you know, you add them together and you find your mean. You all know how to do those, okay? Frequency distribution, very few people know how to find the mean and the standard deviation about the frequency distribution. But that's not what I'm talking about right here. 
in this part of the statistics mode, we want to find the two most important things having to do with these two types of data. So you want the mean, the most two important thing, the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, same thing over here. You want to find the mean and the standard deviation. Why those two things? Because those are the two most important numbers you can find with any statistical uh, method. Now I'm going to add some others down here, but I'm going to make them little because because they're important, but they're not as important as this. So I'm going to put three and four right here, but I'm going to make them a little bit smaller. And that is the um, median and the mid-range. And that's not applicable over here because we're not going to find those. You can find the midpoint. I'm going to put midpoint right here, but it's not as important as these two. Okay, and then down here, five, six, seven, the range, the variance, and the least important, the mode. Okay, and I'm not even going to put that over here because we don't have that, so in the frequency distribution, so you don't even have to write that. Okay, so this whole next chapter is on this, all right? Now, what else is it on? Well, there's one other thing. When you compare apples to oranges, you have to put everything on one universal scale, which we call a z-score. And we'll get into that later. But this is what chapter three is all about. It's all about these three things. Now, out of chapter three, this one is probably 70% of chapter three. This one's about 20% of chapter three. And this one is about 10% of chapter 3. All together, you're talking about 80% of your test is coming from chapter 3. But I'm just showing you what the breakup is. So we're going to spend the first part of chapter 3, we're going to spend on this first column over here. Okay? Um, we're going, we're going to find the mean, median, mode, range. We're going to do it in that order. But the most important are these two terms right here. Now, why are they most important? Well, I'm going to go to the next screen and I'm going to show you. If I was to ask you, what is the definition of the mean or the average? Somebody would raise their hand and say, well, it's the number of, it's, you add up all the numbers and you divide by the number of tests or the number of numbers that you have. And I say, well, that, well, that's nice. That's the mathematical definition. Well, what's the definition? What is that? And then somebody will say, well, that's the average. And then I'll say, well, what is the average? And they'll say, yeah, of all the numbers, it's like a loop. All right? That's not what the definition of the average is. If I was to ask, and, and let's say I ask somebody, who graduated math probability of statistics in high school last semester? Somebody would raise their hand, and I'd say, what's the definition of the average? And they'd go, uh... You add up all the numbers and you divide by, that's what they, you don't, you, you can't tell me what the definition is, all right? And I, I quit trying because nobody could ever answer the question. Even if they sat through a whole semester of high school probability, they could not tell you what the average is. So, first thing we got to do is what's the definition of the average? Definition of the average. Now, why I've got average on the board we're going to go ahead and put in parentheses uh, x bar 
mu, mean, and average. All of those are the same thing. All right. Mu is is spelled M E W for those that need to know, but it's actually I don't even know if that's right because I've been so long since I've seen it. I don't even know if I do it backwards or not. I might I might be doing it backwards. But anyway, it's a funny looking M. Let's say I give you some data out of a class. Let's say this is A, B, C, D, or it could be anything. And let's say this is 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay. And let's say that we got two A's and four B's and six C's and four D's and let's say two F's and let's say six drops or withdrawals. Quitters. Okay. And you see this all the time. Blah, 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 blah. It's a class and you got two A's, four B's, and I hope I drew this right. Let's say we want to make let's say let's Chop this guy off right here. That's supposed to be six. I'm sorry. Let me, let me fix that because it's supposed to be six. There we go. Let's chop this guy off right here. And let's color it blue. Let's chop that off. And when we chop it off, we put it right here. Everybody with me? And then we chop this guy off right here. And we'll color, just put dots here so you can see, because I'm going to erase them in just a second. And put it right here. Now, before I erase it, I want to take the green marker and I want to draw what we have. that we cut off without messing up the green line, hopefully. Somebody tell me, I'm going to get another color. Tell me what my line is going to look like now. Say again. It's going to be a straight line. What did I tell you this looked like? Y'all know what this looks like. What is that called? Say again. I'm so proud of you. Uniform distribution. So the uniform distribution is what? Four. So what does that have to do with the average? The average is the number that represents uniform distribution. That's the definition of the average. And I guarantee you, some of y'all just graduated from ability high school statistics. You didn't know that. It's the number that represents uniform distribution. So the number of students that represents uniform distribution with these grades is 
four. Now, what is uniform distribution? The absence of variation. You can write it either way. If you want to sound more intelligent, you say the absence of the variance. Then you sound more intelligent. Or you can just say uniform distribution. Because what does the green line represent? It goes up, then it goes what? Then it goes up. So I mean, you know what a roller coaster relationship is, or a roller coaster. What do you do? You go up, and then you go down. You go up, and then you go down. That's called variance. Thing on EKG. Thing up and down, up and down. And the purple line represents uniform distribution, which means absence of variation. And you feel good about yourself. So now you know what the definition of the average is. Now that you know the definition, how do you find it? Well, you sum up all the numbers. Summation of x divided by what? N. And that's how you find. So you've got two definitions up here. You've got the word definition. Definition of average is the absence. I don't know how to spell absence. Is it SE or CE? C. Is it C? Yeah. I knew that. All right, absence of variation. Okay, that's the sentence definition, or the word definition. The mathematical definition, or how you calculate it, is you sum up all the numbers and you divide by how many numbers you have. Okay? So those are two important things, especially the first one, because the second one really don't make any sense unless you know what the first one is, and vice versa. But this was this is what I ask all the time. I finally quit asking it because nobody knew it. Okay? All right, question on that. So that's how you find the mean. Now, if I was to ask you to play some, let's do some psychoanalysis here, dang old psychology class, and I ask you what's the first word that pops in your head when I say the word, and I say the word median. What's the first word that should pop in your head? What's the first picture that pops in your head when I say median? I'm sorry, I heard. Blah, 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 blah. Articulate. Articulate means pronounce your word. And volume means say it where I can hear it, not... Okay, let's try it again. What is the picture that pops in your mind when I say median? Middle. 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 That's not a picture. What pops in your mind when I say the word median? Middle of the highway. The middle, okay, somebody said, well, the road. Why, why the road? What do you think of in the road? A dang old piece of concrete that you run over and knocks your car out of alignment when you run over it? Okay, y'all not going to talk to me. It's that big yellow piece of yellow, okay? In the, in the middle of the road, okay? Median. That's what that's called, median. All right? The middle of the road. Okay? Now, when you're talking about the middle, you have to calculate it. There's two ways to find the median, but you have to look at n. If n is odd, you just find the middle. Find, find, find the middle. If n is even, you find the middle two what? And do what? You average it. The middle two numbers and you find the average. Okay? So that's how you calculate the median. Mode. Remember, mode, the first two letters, is what? M-O. What's the first two letters in most? It's the number that shows up the most. Can you have more than one mode? 
Yes. You can have more than one mode. Do not put zero for the mode. My, many of you have had a SA teacher before, right? A teacher that will look for a problem on your test to mark wrong because they don't want you to make a hundred. Okay, you've all had that type of teacher. Or the one that puts smart alecky comments when you make a, get a problem wrong, they put, what planet are you on? Or something like that. All right? If you put zero as a mode, meaning there is none, you're going to have some smart alecky teacher mark it wrong because they're going to say, zero is not even in the list. Okay? So do not put zero when you mean none. You need to write it out. If there is no mode, you put none, no, it, there does not exist, it does not exist, uh, there ain't there, whatever you want to put, but make sure it's words, because you'll always have that teacher, that no life, no boyfriend, no girlfriend, that marks that wrong, even though they know what you mean, okay? So, you can have one mode. One mode is called, it's called a single mode, but some people call it monomodal. Monomodal <laughs> sounds like some kind of condition. Mono, monomodal, okay? One mode is monomodal. Can't even say it quick. Two modes, let's see, um, a bicycle is called bicycle. Tricycle is called tricycle. So what do you think two modes is called? Bimodal. And three, I'm just going to write three. Three modes is called trimodal. And anything after three, you call it polymodal. Now, am I going to No, I'm not going to ask you for that. But if you see a standardized test question that says, what is the meaning of trimodal? If you didn't know what trimodal was, you get that wrong. And that's what trimodal means. It means you have three modes. Now, does that mean that one shows up seven times and the other one shows up six and the other one shows up five? No. <coughs> the number that shows up the most. If you have one number that shows up seven times, then it's monomal. Ma, ma, it's one mode, okay? If you have one that shows up seven times and another number that shows up seven times and that's the most, then it's bimodal. <coughs> you, have to do. you have to list both of them. Capiche? Okay. Is the mode important? No. All right? But we have to find it because in, in some statistics questions, the mode is important, but not in an introductory level. Um, mean, median, ro 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 mean, median, mode, range. Range is your highest minus what? Lowest. Now, this is important when we talk about a... Um, Box clock. You ever been calling somebody and the phone's ringing and they answer and you forget who you're calling because the phone rang so many times? Well, I just had one of those moments. I forgot what we were talking about. You ever gone through a stop sign and didn't know if you stopped or not? Okay. Some of y'all are perfect, but I've done both of them. All right. <laughs> I called somebody one time, it rang like five times in my daydreaming, and I just said, uh, they said, hello, and I went, hello, how you doing? And I'm like, and they're like, fine, and I'm like, I'm going to figure out, I've said to myself, I'm going to figure out who I'm calling in just a minute, but I never did. I finally had to ask them. That was embarrassing. But anyway, mid-range is your highest plus your lowest divided by Two, kind of like your midpoint. 
And that's important also with the box plot. So the box plot that we're going to be learning about later on in the chapter is uses those two also. Okay? Now again, we're only talking about the data-driven set. We're still on that first set. So if you're given a bunch of test scores, then we're still talking about finding those, those numbers. Okay? And here in a second, I'm going to give you a list of list of uh, problems, I mean list of test scores or whatever, and we're going to find all of them. Variance. I just call it VAR. Okay? VAR, I'm going to give you a nasty looking formula, but it's not that big of a deal. The variance is equal to the summation of x minus x bar quantity squared over n minus 1. Now I know it looks all complicated, but it's not really complicated. And then the standard deviation, this is real easy, is equal to the square root of the variance. Now I want everybody to write that variance formula down because we're going to refer to it on the next screen. I want you to highlight that because it's very important that you highlight it because you need to read it. When we're doing the, the calculation on the next couple of screens, I want you to be able to read that. Because the first thing you'll do when you get home is, I don't know how to find standard deviation because I meant the variance because I don't know what this means. Okay? You need to read it. What is X bar? I'm sorry, what? The mean. So I'm going to take the mean away from each one of my x's. That's what that x minus x bar means. And then what am I going to do with that total after I take the mean away from each x? What am I going to do with that number? I'm going to square it, and then I'm going to take all those numbers, and I'm going to what? What does that big funky looking e mean? That means summation. That means I'm going to add it. And then after I add that, I'm going to, get, I'm going to have a VA number on top. And then if I have seven numbers in the list, then that means I'm going to put a six on the bottom. you got to be able to read the formula, not just look at it and go, oh, I don't know how to use it. I don't even call him and ask him what to do. you got to read the formula, not just sit there and, oh, okay, I quit. You can't do that, all right? That's what a lot of y'all do. Not y'all in here or easily, but just students in general. They look at this. It's kind of like looking at a problem with a fraction or a word problem. I can't do it. Just but don't even read the pro. I can't do it. That's too complicated. None of y'all say that, right? Mm, never. All right. So let's go to the Excel spreadsheet. Now the reason I'm going to the Excel spreadsheet is because it's the only way I can get everything on the board. So I don't want to hear any whining about not being able to use it. That's not why I'm showing it to you. I'm showing it to you because it gets everything on the board and I don't have to try to scrunch everything in. So, go to my happy Excel spreadsheet and I'm going to give you all, we'll do two problems. Okay? And let me get this thing situated. Get my walker over here. Let's make this a little bit bigger and make this a little bit deeper and let's make centered because that's an OCD thing to make and let's make this 14 or 16 and let's get rid of this all right so I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna make up some I'm going to go ahead and put them in order. So let's go with 17, 18, 18, 19, 20, 21, 21, 21, and 29. Okay, so n is equal to 8. Somebody check that and make sure I counted them right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Is there 9 or 8? 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, 9. I can't count. There we go. All right, now I want you to take a minute. 
this 124 right now. Take a minute or two. And I want you to do as much as you can without any help on that list. If you suck at it, pretty much sit there and breathe, okay? If you remember some of it from high school, go ahead. If you remember some of it that I just put on the board, go ahead and find as much as you can without any help. Give y'all about another minute. And if you can't do all of it, just consider yourself what? A failure. Yep. Consider yourself a failure. And there's only one thing to do when you're a failure, and that's what? something. Uh, let's go over here and put X bar. And I'm going to sum up all of these numbers. And I'm going to divide by 9. Right? And everybody should have got 20.44 for your mean. Median. Median means middle. So all I got to do is find the middle because I've got nine numbers. So all I got to do is find the middle. I'm going to highlight this and put it in yellow. And one, two, three, four. There is my median. Mode. What number shows up the most? Some people fail. I'm a failure. That would be what? 21? 21. Range. Range is equal to the highest, which in this case is what? 29 minus what? The lowest. And the mid range is going to be equal to, parentheses, the highest plus what? The lowest divided by what? Divided by 
And most of you, 90% of you, probably got all those correct. And then when we got to the variance and mid-range, you just quit. Okay? None of y'all quit, did you? You kept trying, didn't you? Well, what do you do? Well, you get that formula out. I want you to write the formula over to the side of where you're calculating. Okay, so if this is my notebook paper. I'm going to put variance equals of x minus x bar in parentheses squared over n minus 1. I'm your teacher, so I'm going to do a calculation for you. N minus 1 is 8. There, I did that for you. Now, you do the rest. Well, what do you do? Well, you take the mean away from each of those x's. So over here, I'm going to label this x minus x bar. And this is the way I tell students to do it in your book. Do a column right next to your x's and call it x minus x bar. You still could quit if you want to and just not do it. Throw your pencil down real hard, you know, like y'all do. Get mad. All right, so right here I'm going to put x minus x bar. Now I'm going to do something here, and you Excel people, y'all know what I'm going to do. I'm going to lock it. The reason I'm going to lock it is when I pull this down, I don't want it to read the 20 over here and the 21 and the 12, so I locked it. Now, if you, know, if you, if you don't use Excel, just ignore what I just said because you don't need to know it. Okay? And check your numbers. I want you to check 17, 20, and 29. That way you'll have it in your notes. You don't have to do every number, but I want you to do 17, I want you to do 20, and I want you to do 29 for your notes to make sure you understand where you got that number. And check the board to make sure that you got the same number. Now, Students always ask this about midway through the problem. They say, well, how do you know how many digits to carry it to? I tell students to carry everything to five digits in statistics. Because most of the time, the, the question is going to ask you to write round to two digits. The hundreds or the tens, one of the two. So I tell everybody just round. You always round at the end of the problem anyway. Do not, do not, do not round and say, okay, well, that's 3.44, so I'm just going to call it 3. Point. Don't do that. You do not round in the middle of the problem. Carry everything out four or five digits. That's up to you. At the end of the problem, you read the directions and the question and see what they ask you round to the tenth or round to the hundredth. But you do not do that in the middle of the, or the beginning of the problem. Friend day? All right, so check 17, 20, and 29. You should have those numbers. Okay, now, what does the formula say do next? Square. So I'm going to call this column x minus x bar quantity what? Square. So I'm going to take this guy right here, and I'm going to raise it to the second power. Check your numbers. Do the first one, the 20 and the 29, and see if you got the same numbers I got. Or do the whole thing if you can write fast. But if it takes you like five minutes to write six digits, and you might not want to try to do the whole thing. Just do the first, middle, and last number. Why do you square it? You might want to take a guess. At why do you square it? It's very simple. Make everything positive. That's why you square it. Would I make her mad? Did she have to leave? How are we doing, Easley? I made her mad. She left. She just come back in. Y'all doing all right? 
Yeah, we're good. Good. I can't imagine an instructor making this difficult, but I have had people take Math 120 and say they couldn't get past this first math of finding the standard deviation. Maybe I'm making it hard. I don't know. Now, what does this, okay, let's, let's go over here and let's look at our formula. And I'm going to take my highlighter, dang old aqua, and I'm going to put that in aqua. I just did that. And I'm going to take my green highlighter, and I'm going to highlight that. I just did that. We've already done the denominator, so what else is left? That's not rhetorical. I want you all to answer the question. That funky looking E out front, Hubert, that's right. The funky looking E means that you're going to add up all of that last column. So for those, those of you that have a calculator, go ahead and add those up. I'm going to move down and I'm going to add them up and you check to see if your number matches my number. If I ever get the whiteboard to work. Damn Russians. All right. those up. Dang old summation. I got 100.22. Y'all check me. And I have just found the numerator to my formula. Let me go back down. We're going to highlight that one. Dang old purple. Actually, it's magenta, but I doubt very seriously I'm going to be able to find the magenta on the Excel screen, but I'll try. And I'll try to. Oh, am I good or what? There we go. Y'all are impressed, aren't you? I know you are. All right. So we're going to take our handy dandy highlighter over here, and I'm going to put 100. Oops, I'm not going to do that. 100.22 to repeating, and I'm going to color that. Again. I already did n minus 1 for y'all, so all you have to do now is take 100.22 and divide by 8. Somebody do that for me and give me three or four digits. Twelve point five two eight. Okay. Now, what did I say the standard deviation was? The standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance. So that means take the square root of that number or raise it to the 0.5 power and give me that number. And I circled standard deviation because that's our, one of our important numbers. Okay, now, who's got a question? Is 
this stuff ain't hard. Any questions on that? Now I want to ask you a question. I want you to write down the mean and the standard deviation. Let's say 20.4 is the mean. And 3.5 is the standard deviation. I want you to write those two numbers down. Because I'm going to explain to you what standard deviation is. The best way to explain it is to draw it. So I'm going to take it to my handy dandy whiteboard. And add another page. And basically, standard deviation is equal to the spread. Okay? Now, I don't know what you're thinking of when I say spread, but most of the time, spread is how far something is out. Okay? Like if you're talking about spread of points, point spread or whatever, how far it's out. So I'm just going to draw a normal curve because this is the best application of the standard deviation. We're also going to bring in what we call the empirical rule. Very important. Start learning it now. I don't know what page it's on. But somebody find it in the index and tell me what page it's on because you need to start reading about it now. I believe it's in the last part or just look. Okay? Empirical rule. The empirical rule is pretty much estimation. It's estimation of the normal curve. Somebody can find that page. And read it, and if it doesn't say empirical rule, it'll have a, it'll have a normal curve, and then it'll have percentages on it, and it'll be colored. It's on page 132. Page 132. Everybody confirm that. Page 132, I think. All right. It should have 34% here, 34% here, 13.5 here. 13.5 here. Some books are different right in here. They put 2.5 or 2.3 and then put 0.2 over here. Some put 2.5 all together. It's different. This one, 2.3 and 0.2. Or they may have 2.2 right here and 0.3. It depends on different books. All right. The mean goes in the middle. What would you say the mean was? 20.4. Y'all settle down. Y'all getting too loud. All right. Now, on this side, the right side of the number line, which the number line starts at zero, right? What do you do on the right side of the number line? Do you add or subtract? You add. You're moving in the right direction, that means you're going to add because it's positive. Okay. So somebody give me the standard deviation. 3. Point what? 3.5. So this is going to be 23.9. Somebody check me. I'm going to take 20.4 and add 3.5. Now somebody add 3.5 here. 27.4. What's the standard deviation again? 3.5. So that's going to be 31.9. I don't know if it is or not. Or 29. 30.9. 30. All right, now I got a real hard question to ask y'all. If you go to the right and add, what are you going to do and go to the left? I'm going to subtract. So what's 20.4 minus 3.5? I'm sorry, what? 16.9. 16.9 minus 3.9. Dang old 13. And what's 13 minus 3.9? I'm sorry, what? 13 minus 3.5 would be like. 
This would be 13.4. Okay. 13.4 minus 3.5. I'm sorry. 9.9. 9.9. That's what the standard deviation tells you. Now, right now, we're talking not a big deal. Let's, let's also talk about something else. Somebody tell me what the mean, the median was. The, the median was 20, exactly 20? Yeah. All right. And the, the mean is 20.4. And somebody tell me what the midpoint or the midrange was. 23. Is that right? Okay, 23. What can you tell me about all three of those numbers? They're pretty close. Now, the midrange is a little bit off. But the, the mean and the median are really what? They're really close, all right? When you see the mean and the median really close, <clears throat> that is a what? A good thing. That means that your data is tight. That means that you don't have any outliers. That means you don't have anything to throw your calculations off, all right? When I was in, and I might have told you this in 103, some of y'all, when I was in physics at Clemson, Clemson, I had to make a mousetrap car which all you could do was put wheels on the car, but you had to motivate the car by the spring on the mousetrap. Okay? Well, we did that, and the, the physics teacher told us to run a number of trials, but N had to be a minimum of 10 trials. So we ran 20. Why did we run 20? Because sometimes that mousetrap car would run, run, off, the, run off the track and hit a chair, and the time would be 15 seconds instead of five because we had to get it back and put it back on. So we had to throw out 10 of the worst what? Trials. So you had 10 good trials. All right? The reason I'm telling you that is the closer your numbers are together, the what? The better. If you have a large... If you have a large... Hold on a minute. I don't know what's wrong with this thing. If you have a large standard deviation compared to your numbers, that's bad. Okay? A large standard deviation means you've got a big what? A big spread. If you have a big spread, these two numbers are not going to be close together. Okay? Let me ask you a question. When you shoot a gun, okay, I know guns are offensive, whatever. When you shoot a gun, all right, let's say it's a BB gun for some of you people don't like guns. All right, it's a BB gun. And let's say you shoot 10 BBs out of that gun. What do you want on the target? Huh? What do you want on the target? You want to be together. Together. What's that called? This Cluster. Center mass. Cluster. All right, you want center mass. You want all 10 of those BBs to be in a little area about that size. Why? Because that means you can shoot that blind gun. All right, that means you know what you're doing. It's called accuracy. All right, and those group is called center mass. What's that called? It's called a blank group. What's it called? Anybody know? You have a a lot of bullets hitting and I'm hitting in a little center mass like that. It's called a blank group. Anybody know what that's called? T I G H T. Thank you. Tight group. Why is the word tight associated with those that group? Why is it considered tight? Because that means that your accuracy is really good. Tight means good when you're talking about bullets. All right? I was, I was in California, stationed in California, and me and my buddy, we grew up together. We went to the Marine Corps together, got stationed together, got sent over to Saudi Arabia together. He was 
he's, he's kind of, he's just him, okay? And, and I got my quirks and he's got his. Well, he don't listen too good, all right? And we were on a final protective drill, which where you have to shoot like the 60 and the saw. You have to shoot them side by side. And the number of targets you hit, you got to hit like 10 targets out of 12 targets to, to get your certification as a 60 gunner or whatever, whatever the case may be. Well, we I shot my rounds and they got I had a good group and I got certified. He don't listen too good, all right? He shot his rounds and he was all over the place. And the the instructor said, blah blah blah, you're loose as a goose. What did he mean by loose as a goose? The opposite of loose is what? Tight. The opposite of tight is loose. So his rounds we're going all over the place because he wasn't dialing in to get the tight group. So the reason I'm telling you this, same thing between accuracy and precision, all right? A tight group means that your numbers are tight. It's accurate. That's what you want. With So if you got 15 numbers and you got two or three outliers, throw them out, okay? Because, you know, Nobody's going to, are you going to have another seven foot sixth grader? No. And you're not going to have another third grader that can make an 1800 on SAT. All right? Those are not normal. Okay? So you don't include them in your, now, do you include them in your raw data? Yes. You include them in your raw data to see where they fit. Okay? Here's my sixth grader right here. And here's my sixth grader. We got one sixth grader that sits there, and then you got a sixth grader up here that's seven foot. Okay, that's an outlier. You include them in your raw data, but you don't include them in your calculations because what are they going to do? They're going to throw off your calculations. Let me show you. That's why I use spreadsheet too. When you go to the spreadsheet, and let's see, go to the spreadsheet. We'll go back here. And let's say these are ages of people in my classroom. Everybody with me? I got ten people, nine people in the classroom. Well, let's say that I'm teaching at BFE University, and I'm teaching at a campus that has all kind of different people come to it. Well, 17, 16, say 18, 19. Let's say we jump up to 20, 22, 23. 47, 48, and 50. Okay? Now, what I want to do right quick is I want to go over here and I want to put in my variance and my standard deviation. The variance is equal to this number divided by parentheses this number minus 1. And then this is equal to this number raised to the 0.5 power. Now, what, ha what just happened? Well, look at your standard deviation before. It was 3.5. That's pretty tight. Now it's what? 14.5. Well, it jumped up because these three numbers right here. Well, let's say Let's say we got 24, 25, 26, and 72. Oh, grandma. Look what the standard deviation did then. Now, Hubert, how do you know if it's high or not? Well, look at your numbers. 17, 18, 18, 19, 22. So, you know, that's a, that's a pretty big number, considering that the gap between 17 and 18 is what? 1, 17 to 19 is 2. So the gap's right here, or 2 or 4 or whatever, and then you got a gap of 17? No, that's not good. So the gap has to be in relation to these gaps right here. 18, 18, 19, that's 1. 19 to 22 is 3. 22 to 23 is 1. 23 to 25 is... So you got a gap of 2 or 3 or lower between the numbers and then... Booyah! You got a gap of 17. 
So let's take this guy out. So you would take him out and just count those numbers above it, and that way your standard deviation would not be 17 versus 3. Okay? So let's fill that in. Let's say that's 27. Now you got 3.8. Also, look at this. Let's put 72 back in there. What are we doing? We're interpreting data. We're looking at the data. We're comparing the data. This is the third phase of statistics. You gather, you calculate, and you what? You interpret. We're interpreting the data. Now, are we concluding? No, we're not concluding anything yet. We're looking to make sure that the data makes some kind of sense. So I'm going to take my handy-dandy highlighter and let's let's color this one blue and let's color this one blue and I'm going to color this one blue but I'm also going to color this side right here yellow Things I do for y'all. All right, 26, 22, and 44. That basically tells you as a presenter that this data is all messed up. Why? Why does it tell you that the data is all messed up? Because it's all over the place. You ever thrown a ping pong ball in a dadgum room full of mouse traps? Y'all ever done that before? Have you? Yeah. <laughs> what happens? That ping pong ball goes all over the place. Why? Because it hits one mouse trap. That mouse trap flips and sends it over to another one, and then it starts a domino effect. All right. All right. Same thing here. This thing's like the ping pong ball. It's gonna. Now let's change this one number right here to 27. What does the numbers do? Close together. So when you're presenting or you are looking at a presenter and they're throwing these numbers up, you're going to zero in on that X bar, you're going to zero in on that median, and you're going to zero in on that mid range, and then what should be a very small spread? The standard deviation. Small spread, three numbers match. Large spread, ping pong ball. And I guarantee you there's somebody in here that went through statistics, they never realized that. That's why it's, there's got interpretation. That's why it's in there. You got to interpret the data to see if you're dealing and any of you ever put any of you ever put a nut on a bowl and the threads were stripped? What happens? That's all I heard. What? Can't get it back. You just sit there and you turn, you turn the nut, and you just sit there and turn the nut. You, it's like spinning your wheels in the mud. You don't go anywhere. All right. If you don't look at the data and you don't see that these two are all out of wampus, then you're basically missing the boat and the train. You've got to interpret the data. You've got to look at it. Okay. Now, let's change it to six numbers. Let's go down and change it to six numbers, and you find the, wait a minute, was this nine? Yeah. Let, well, let's change it to eight. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to hit erase, and I'm going to put n is equal to eight right here. And I want you to do your thing now that you know a little bit about it now. I'm going to put in 18, 18. 19, 21, 21, oops, 1, 21, 22, let's say that's 3, 6, 25, and 27. That should be 8. Okay, now I want everybody to do as much as you can, as far as you can, mean, median, mode, range, mid-range, variance, standard deviation. Is 
Did I make somebody else leave? Oh well. I must have made her really mad. She ain't come back yet. She even left her book. Easily, y'all need to settle down up there. Y'all getting a little bit too loud. Must be y'all must eat a lot right before y'all come to class. Is that what it is? Anderson campus and Easley campus? I just eat a lot and you just don't want to talk, you get lazy. No, Hubert, that's not it. Yeah, that's it, Hubert. Thank you, class. I'm just quiet because everyone else is quiet. So well, y'all don't need to be quiet because I don't like that. <laughs> what was that? Corey, oh yeah, <laughs> Corey, yeah, that's a well, that's a foreign language class. You have to pretty much talk in oh, there. Oh yeah. But but students are so conditioned that they they go into a classroom to think they can't talk. I understand. Any good movies this weekend? I'm very depressed about the horror movie thing. I haven't had a good horror movie in a while. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. Was it? Yeah. Winchester? Hmm? I've heard I like Winchester. Winchester was good. Did you see Jigsaw? Yeah, I don't get into Jigsaw. I don't get into those. <laughs> I don't get in to cut your freaking arm off. I don't get into those. That's stupid. I get into the... Possessions, Paranormal Activity. I love Paranormal Activity. I love those movies. Did you like um, Possessions, Hauntings, Paranormal Activity, Jason, and Michael Myers. That's it. Do you like Poltergeist, the old one? Yeah, I like Poltergeist. I like all of them, yeah. That one was awesome. I think zombies and and cutting off your arm and stuff like that, that's, that's World stupid. World War Z was just horrible. What? World War Z. Yeah, I don't. I didn't like that. I do not understand. I want somebody to explain to me what the fascination is with zombies because that just doesn't I, it doesn't calculate I, I just don't understand why people like those movies I just don't 
If somebody can explain it to me, I'd appreciate it. Is zombie killing? I guess it's, it's the. So I've been kind of depressed over the the selection of horror movies lately. There has been none. I, w I wanted to watch Heredity on the Fire Stick the other night, but it wouldn't work because I had to type. Did you see The Quiet Place? The what? Yeah, I saw the it. Quiet? It was it was okay. I liked it, yeah, it was, but it was. It was different. I don't consider it a horror movie. I don't think it was a yeah. horror movie. I, it was okay. Oh, and I don't get into the home invasion ones either. I don't get into those at all. I don't like, like what? those. Which ones? Well, the, what's it? Where the day everybody come and kills everybody? What's the? Oh, the purge? Yeah. Purge. I, I, I purge. Don't oh, like yeah. Those. I don't I've not those. seen it yet, but I've only seen one horror movie in my life. Oh, my gosh. I've seen thousands. Well, of them. have you seen 13 cameras? No, I haven't oh, seen that one. That's on Netflix. It's pretty bad. I don't have to watch that one. One that my parents actually know that I've seen. No. So, which would be Poltergeist. Yeah, I can't see your mother watching Poltergeist. I, I oh, she see, was. She there. loves horror movies. No. I, I, I couldn't. Your mother. I, I, I your mother's it, too SpongeBob. I got SpongeBob. It to the doll scene. Took her mm -hmm. in the room. Mm -hmm. Shut off the lights. Yeah. She That's why awesome. Paranormal Activity. <laughs> Paranormal Activity. I love those movies. And they're very cheap to make. All you got to do is just have a fishing line and That's move true. some stuff around. And, and everybody sits there and goes. They're actually pretty smart. Whoever come up with them, very smart. Because they made probably millions of dollars. Kind of like uh, one of my favorite movies, Dang Old Napoleon Dynamite. They oh my God. spent $500 on, on a movie and make like $10 million. So they probably did. Okay, I'll shut up now. All right, mean. We're going to add them all up. And we're going to divide by eight. Check your numbers as we go. Median. Well, we got to get, I'm going to color this one yellow. And we're going to go down. And that's these two numbers right here. Now, I want to show you something here. It's going to happen in the box plot. Equal parentheses, average them up, 21. And I got two or three degrees. I know it's going to be 21. Okay, but it's not always going to be the same number of people. So I don't need somebody telling me it's just going to be 21. Shut up. Divided by 2, and there's that. Now, I want you to realize that that number right there is a number that's right there. Okay? It's right in, the, in between 21 and 21. Now, that's important when we do a box plot later. So you want to make a note of that. Put a little dot, maybe in a different color, like a different color pen or whatever. Put a little dot right there between the 21s. Draw an arrow to it and say median. Because when we get to the box plot, that, that comes back into the picture. Mode. I care less about the mode, but what is it? 18 and 21. So that means I go to my handy-dandy mouse here. And I put 18, comma, 21. Range is equal to this guy minus this guy. We good? And this guy plus this guy. And he got his parentheses. The Conjuring. I love the Conjuring movies. I wish they'd make like 15 of them. Annabelle. Love uh, Annabelle. Uh, uh, Annabelle. Uh, yeah, I love that Annabelle. Uh, uh, no. Chucky. <laughs> No, I, I can't get into no Chucky. I, that, that's stupid. That's like the Leprechaun. You ever seen that Leprechaun movie? That's about the dumbest yeah. movie. Even if you're drunk, that's a stupid movie. I mean... could scare you if you're drunk. No, Maybe. it wouldn't scare me. It's about Maybe. the dumbest movie I think I've ever seen. 
So that's why I'm very particular oh, about my horror movies. There's a Slenderman movie coming out. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Now, that is a scary movie. I want to see that. Yeah, there's a movie. I can't remember what it's called, but it's got the Slenderman in each of the videos, in each of the VCR tapes. Mm -hmm. Now, that's that was a scary movie. I can't remember the name of it. You ought to remember the name of it. Like it, was a, it was a story of a news reporter and the cameraman and the producer of the little interviews that they were doing, and they found these tapes. And the Slender Man was in the camera and, and drove them all three crazy. Drove them back. And it was scary. That was a scary movie. Anyway, I'll shut up. All right, so now we're going to take variance and we're going to equal this guy minus the mean. And I'm going to lock it. And we're going to go down. Now, I would suggest you just do the... Just do the first one, the last one, and then do one in the middle to check to see if the numbers come out right. Now, what are we going to do with each one of those numbers? Square. Square it. And copy that down. And then add it all up. And see what y'all get. And then that's your numerator equals this guy divided by parentheses 8 minus 1 and raise that to the what power? I just raised it to the second power. Stupid. All right, to the 0.5 power. There you go. So you should have all of those numbers. Now let's throw a let's throw a six year old in the class. And you see our blue numbers? Let's color them blue again or another color. Let's color them verde. Dang old green. And mid range. All over the place. But when we change that 6 back to a, what was it? 18. No more ping pong ball. So now you got center mass, you got a tight group. Question. Now, what if you want to do this on your handy dandy calculator? Well, you pull up your handy dandy calculator. And some of you on the calculator drill team in high school, you already know how to do it. You name your calculator and tell it bedtime stories at night before you put it to bed. You dang old take, I think it's stat, edit, and I'm just going to type in 2, enter, 4, enter, 6, enter, and 8. And I'm going to put 1 down at the bottom. And I'm going to put uh, 17 or 12. I'm going to put it out of order. Now, what if I want to put them in order? When I go to stat, sort A, ascending. What is A? That's going from lowest to what? Nice. Highest, because you're going up. Dang old ascend, dang old definition of ascend. Descending is starting from the top and going down. So I'm going to sort A. Now, some calculators automatically default to L1, which is your first column. <coughs> this one, I'm going to make sure, and I'm going to type Shift 1. Look above the 1, you'll see the little L1. That means your first column. Close parentheses, Enter. Done. Go back to Stat, Edit. I'll be done. Look at there. It put them in order. Go to stat. Move over to calculate. First variable statistic. Dang old second. One. Close parentheses. Oh, it don't, it don't ask for parentheses. Sorry. Enter. Now, there's your X bar. 
And I'm going to say a word right here that somebody's going to have a cow over, but sex. SX, right there, sex. And the reason I do that is because when y'all put this on a test and y'all get this on a test, y'all start discombobulating and you start saying, oh gosh, which one is it? Which one is it? But you'll remember sex. SX, okay? SX is your standard what? Deviation. And the, and the sigma X, that's your variance. Okay, remember, SX. All right, I'm going to go down. This is your quartiles. We're going to get to that at the end of the chapter. Now, some of your calculators are going to give more information. Has somebody got a calculator putting out the more information like the other information, I don't know, median mode, all that stuff? Does it put out that? You can go and pull out, go to list right here, second list. No, that's not it. Hold on. What is the thing that you look up everything under? Uh, just give me a second. There's a there's a button that you hit that you can find everything in the calculator. I can't think of it. I thought it was list. <sighs> Names. Let me see. No. Second list. That's not it. Okay, I don't know which one it is, but there is a button that you hit, and I can't find it. Mode. It's not mode. Catalog. Is it catalog? Oh my gosh, y'all think I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. There is a button that you hit, and I can't find it right now. And it's where you, li you list everything that's on the calculator, and I don't know why I can't find it right now. Oh, y'all, y'all help me if y'all have a chance. You know, just jump right in here. I just gonna sit there, quiet as a mouse. Oh well, I can't catalog. There it is. Yeah, Hubert, I don't know why you didn't see that. Thanks for the input. All right, and I can't think of it. It's either display. I told my 103 class last semester, but I doubt anybody remembers. Oh, gosh, I'll have to look it up. It's either display or... Give me a second. I can't think of it right now, but I'll have to look it up. So you can add that on your calculator, and it'll give you several more things, like the mode, the median. It'll give you more information, but I can't find it right now. It's under catalog. Second, zero. See the catalog above it, above the zero? But anyway, now what if I wanted to plot that? Well, we'll get into plotting next time, because some of y'all are going to have a fit in a minute, going to cardio and function or something. Because uh, class ends at what uh, 2:35, and yeah, some of y'all are going to start going into convulsions here soon. I can't, I can't remember it right now. But that's how you do it on the calculator. If you wanted to do it, well, we haven't got to uh, what's the thing on? Um, I can't think of the, the glorified spreadsheet. Stat Crunch. I'll show you how to do it on Stat Crunch. But right now you should be able to find all that information based on five or six numbers. You should be able to find mean, median, mode, range, mid-range, variance, and standard deviation. Now what we'll do Wednesday is we'll do some more of those problems, but we'll put them on the normal curve and we'll start looking at the empirical rule. Make sure you read over the empirical rule. Uh, what page was that on? Page 132. Make sure you write that down. So you need to start reading chapter 3. I think right now I'm in about 3.3, 3.4. Okay? Skip anything that has to do with frequency distribution. Skip anything that has to do with z-scores because we're not I'm doing that last. Any questions about what we went over today?
in the answers or the numbers yes and you can type them in order people usually try to type them in order but if you got 25 or more numbers just type them in go to stat fourth a and then type in second one cell one close parentheses enter and it'll sort and then go to stat Calculate the first variable statistic. That's why it's number one because it's the most used. And then second one, enter, and you're looking for X bar and SX. Question. And we're going to be doing it again next week. So I mean Wednesday. So it ain't no big deal if you don't know how to do it on your calculator tonight. In fact, I want you to do it by hand, at least a couple more problems, so you can appreciate the calculator. All right, y'all get out of here and have a good day. And you can go back over the, the video if you want to. If I went too fast, then go back over the video. I'm fixing to turn the recording off right now.